Well, hello everybody and welcome back to our increasingly desperate campaign with Medieval Total War as the Germans of the Holy Roman Empire with glorious achievements. In the last episode, we had a disastrous attempt at a crusade up in Livonia. Uh, we just got soundly beaten by these peasants, woodmen, spearmen, archers, javelinmen, especially Vikings. These are probably our biggest problem, honestly. Uh, so we get, we get absolutely trounced by the people of Novgorod. We're not attempting that again, at least until we get uh, some more security and, and some much better troops. Uh, but we've also gone back and forth with war with the Italians, with the English. Uh, where things stand now is we are currently at war with the English, the Italians, and the people of Novgorod. Uh, we're moving our ships, though, away from the English and away from the people of Novgorod, so after this next season or two, those wars should cease as we no longer have a land barrier. The Italian war, though, is something of a problem. We got our warning uh, just, I think, two or three years ago from the Pope to stop attacking the Italians. That means that if we try to relieve the Siege of Flanders, which, A, kudos to them for getting ships all the way around, uh, don't say that the AI in this game does not know how to do naval invasions, because, man, they do, and they will surprise you. I was not seeing this uh, at all in a million years. So uh, they got me in Flanders, and we're under siege, but if I were to attack here with this army, which could probably take it back, we're going to be excommunicated. That's just going to add another layer of difficulty to the loyalty problems, both of my generals probably and of the provinces in the homeland for sure. So we're going to avoid that. We're going to wait out until, uh, let's see, I want to go, let's say, nine or ten more turns. Let's go to 1193. And then we will do a counterattack. 1193, maybe 1194, just to be super safe. And then we will focus everything on this goal, the Holy Roman Empire. If we wait till 1194, that still gives us 10 turns to meet our 1204 date for getting, let's say, Milan and Tuscany. We can get those. Maybe we can also get Provence back. Um, at that point, you know, we will have a couple of turns to get some gains at the expense of the Italians. That's basically all I'm looking for at this point. I don't want to get all of those goals, but I want to focus on this part of the map. I've been neglecting it arguably for too long, and there's just a wide frontage that the Italians can attack on. Provence, Burgundy, Tyrolia, Austria. If we narrow this down a bit to just instead of four provinces, let's say three, or maybe even none, right? If we can come in with, with a proper application of force, uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, we can have a nice secure border in northern Italy. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, so at any rate, that's the plan there. Uh, we're looking at public order being pretty nice all across our realm. And so I think now all that remains to be done is to wait and see how these ceasefires go. The other thing I'm doing is I'm sending princesses around to get marriages. We don't want to cancel that. Um, so that they can increase the loyalty of some of my generals. Like this guy here is a two-star uh, general, another princess, uh, Princess Marriage is going to give him another two shields here, so that'll get him up to a respectable five shields for loyalty. And finally, I'm hoping to get uh, back into the good graces of some other important factions like the Hungarians and especially the Danes, who are really uh, reaping the benefits of the chaos in Western Europe. Uh, the Danes dropped their alliance with me because they were allied with the... Let's see, actually, we're not currently... Right, okay, it's the English. We're at war with the English, and that's the problem. But as soon as that war ends, we could try to ally again with the Danes. So let's see if that war is going to end. Uh, similarly with the people of Novgorod, I think that's keeping us from our alliance with Hungary as well as Spain. And so if we can get all of those things to happen, great. We can kind of secure our borders again, at least start to feel a little bit better. Okay, interestingly, they're just waiting this one out, which is fine. Very good, we got some marriages. Okay, we do have uh, some training that I was doing, and okay, that's better than, than it could have been. Three shields of loyalty for Yodo de Swabians is pretty decent. I think I also trained, <clears throat> yes, we're trying to, we're trying to focus on quality at this point in the campaign. Uh, we're going for stuff like feudal sergeants, we're going for Swabian swordsmen because they are quite good, especially when we're dealing with Italians. Uh, in terms of our income, it's, you know, it's it's better than it could be. We're projected to make 293 uh, this coming season, so we're just going to hope that'll be enough. Let's, um, let's see, let's drop the Spearman on there. He's going to take charge, and let's take a cruise around. 
Um, we're still at war with the English, but we've lost the Novgorod War. So wonderful news here. I'm going to move my bishop uh, and try to get eyes on the Spanish. Actually, let's see. It might be easier to do this with an emissary because they can um, they can go right to the king. Because I can't drop my bishop on an emissary. Ta-da! Right? doesn't show up. But if I take this emissary and do the same exact thing, there we go. Now, that's also going to tell me where the king is. Uh, that's Cordoba. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at the Spanish. Can I get that alliance? Uh, let's see. Okay, they're at war with the Danes, which is really interesting, too. Oof. Okay, I think I'd rather be allied with the Danes. Well, we'll see if maybe we can get both. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get a twofer here. Uh, I've got an emissary hanging around Genoa, just in case we can get another ceasefire. The Italians seem willing enough to go for ceasefires, uh, but then they will go right ahead and attack. So I'm just going to hope that they're feeling reluctant to press this advantage at the moment. Uh, but let's see. We can't still go after the Danes. We've got to wait for that English war to cool off. And here, this is going to fall. Very low taxes. There's a chance we could get a Loyalist Rebellion. I don't have spies yet, but if I did, that would be very nice. So let's go ahead and we'll keep going with Feudal Sergeants. Uh, we'll just keep, keep training guys up. We just need the men. All right. What else do we want to do here? We did have enough money to start building another ship. Uh, so currently this port is not making a ton of money. But if I connect uh, another ship up here, then we're going to have uh, one, two, three extra ports. Uh, and both of these provinces have trading posts. So I think that's going to be really helpful. I don't want to spend too much more money though now because, as you can see, we're down just around 1300 So not too good, all things considered. Um, I guess the French, okay, they're, yeah, they're not going to be happy with me. They're allied with the Italians, they're at war with the Danes. Hmm. All right, just end year. We're trying to get through this as quickly as possible so we can uh, really bring the war back to the Italians. That means we're going to lose Flanders here. The nice thing is, though, uh, we're currently under siege up there. Okay, man, the Danes are going nuts all over the western seaboard. Oof. King of the Danes has been captured and executed in Spain, it looked like. He went down to Castile, I think. Okay, yep, Flanders has fallen. But at least we know that we can survive financially without it, because we've been without the income from Flanders for the past few turns. Okay, we've got an heir. Now, where's he going to be? Okay, Spanish have an alliance now. <laughs> that happened rather quick. Um... Okay, beautiful. I'll take it. He's going to give me a princess. Great. Prince Herman is strange. That sucks. Okay, and he's coming of age in Tripoli, too. That is really bad. So all my princes are going to come of age down to Tripoli, which means I've got no family members um, of note who are up in Germany itself. Oh, my gosh. All right. Let's take the emissary then, and what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to strip titles from this guy in Ile-de-France. So this spearman here, uh, I gave two titles just because I needed somebody in Ile-de-France who had loyalty that was better than one. Uh, however, Imperial Chamberlain grants two loyalty, and I can give that to this guy to get him up to three. So, you know, that could be nice. That could be nice. Otherwise, I'm just hoping he doesn't rebel. Now, in order to get a civil war happening, my understanding is that you need to have a family member uh, or at least a general of royal blood. This guy does not have royal blood. That would be indicated by the crown. Um, let's see, do we have anybody who is? I think one of these guys, yes, Prince Rudolph. Okay, he's technically a prince, but this guy would be a perfect candidate right here, Otto Karolinger. Now, this guy could rebel too. He could start a civil war, I guess. Um, and he's only got three command stars. Uh, but he's a prince, we can't give him any titles. So we're just gonna have to hope he doesn't uh, he doesn't lose it. Okay, but I guess what I'm saying is because he doesn't have royal blood, Lord Arbach here 
I think is not going to be the one to lead a civil war. So if we can just keep out an eye for those royal blood generals who might cause us trouble, um, then and then hopefully we can hopefully we can avoid that. We can actually crank up our taxes a little. Okay, this is surprising. We're gonna have to really watch this though because I suspect they're gonna plummet again at a certain point. Let's see, Bavaria is very low. No, I want to keep it above 100. Uh, not good enough. Okay. All right. With all that, we get 600 in profits. One more turn for that next ship, and we're going to have to remember to move that. Uh, but speaking of moving, we've got another princess we can bring up somewhere to maybe keep an eye on, uh, on, on handing her off to somebody else. All right, this guy's a drinker. No good there. Do we want to go for another Swabian? I think so. That's like more than a third of our current treasury, though. All right, well, maybe instead, let's start getting some of these guys together. Hmm. Let's see, we could bring him down to Franconia. And the Danes look like they're pretty happy with me, right? They're not massing a ton of troops at the border of Denmark, so even though we're not allied, uh, that's rather nice. Let's see, the Danes are at war with the Spanish. I've already got a Spanish princess. If I can go, and let's get... Okay, he's stripping titles. Where's the other emissary? Down here. So I'll send him up to try to find... Let's see if we can find an English emissary. We're looking for uh, alliance with the English. Well, let's just go right to Wessex. How about that? We can then move one of our ships back here to Friesland. We can at least get some trade going that way. And we've got another ship we can move into the Baltic. And that should not restart any hostilities. So we should be all good there. Friesland, however, cannot make ships. Um... And we're only getting wool out of this. Flanders was really the honeypot, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna do that and see how it works. Hmm. I feel like we want some more income, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait. Let's um Yeah. We'll do it again. 45 upkeep is not that bad. I don't think the Italians are going to move out of Flanders. And so we do have an opportunity eventually to get that back. Okay, very good. That's not good because I forgot to move my assassin. Okay, Lord de Rote. Very good. So far, no civil wars just yet. Now, there could be one brewing, and I'm not being told because I don't have any spies. Oh, that sucks. Okay, we do have another princess, though. Where is she? Princess Gertrude, you go up and marry this two-star Swabian. I'm sure he's nice. And we will also give him this spare title, Count of Friesland, just to bring him up to three. With the princess, he'll be at five. Okay, all working good. We've got a free title, Count of Champagne, for two shields worth of loyalty. We can give that to someone who we think might need it. Yeah, this guy. This guy's okay. He seems to have improved a little bit, actually. I thought he was quite a bit lower a little while ago. Uh, but that said, all of our emissaries are doing stuff, except for this guy. And yeah, we can send him right over to try an alliance. Let's just check the diplomacy of the English. Okay, they're not allied with any of my enemies. Now, we have also a bishop here. Let's send the bishop over to... Well, where are the Hungarians? We'll send him over to Kiev and then work our way back west. We're making 900 now, why is that? Maybe fiddling with taxes. But uh, regardless, 
move our boat up here. Now we're going to be trading not only from Tripoli up to these places, but also from Antioch uh, down into these two ports. So I think this is going to be a really profitable move. And yeah, let's go ahead with another another ship there. And since this is so important, um, securing Hungarian alliance, I think I want another bishop uh, up in Serbia moving through. Yeah. He'll, he'll head, how will we do this? We just move him, set him to Wallachia. And here we go. So this is why we have to keep our eye on it. The uh, shift key works pretty well. Uh, you press shift and it shows you the colors. However, it is not foolproof. Um, it only updates when you check the in information scroll, I believe, something like that. So it's kind of worth it just moving through your territories. The quick way to cruise through is to, you know, press the arrow keys here and you can just take a glance at tax levels and loyalty. Okay, I think we're good. We can't squeeze any more out of that, so. Okay, very low taxes. Maybe they'll improve it, right? Maybe, maybe the Italians are going to do something really nice with Flanders in our absence. Here, they're just training presence, peasants out of Provence. And they're probably just going to continue to do that. That's, that's is where you get the uh, Valor bonus for peasants. And apparently what the AI will do in this game is if there is a province that has a Valor bonus, they will get to the point where they can train that unit and then do nothing else in terms of upgrades. Um, that's at least what I've been reading. It seems to, uh, seems to be true. They've done nothing with this fort. So we'll see if that changes. That's also why you tend not to see very much happening in Venice, because this gives a bonus to uh, galleys, which I think they can make pretty much from the beginning of the game. All right. I'm glad to see, though, that the Italians don't have huge forces at Milan. Um, let's think about this. What I want to do, what I'd love to do, is get Hungarian Alliance. And then, maybe... Think about hitting the poles at Silesia and then stopping. Oh my gosh, the Novgorod has moved down to Prussia. Ooh. Interesting. So let's take a look at this goal here. This is another one of ours. This was the thing we focused on last episode, which screwed everything up. Uh, Drang Nagostin. So two points for Prussia, one each for Livonia and Silesia. So we went for Livonia. Prussia was owned by the poles, but it is not now. However, if we swipe Silesia... That's got a decent income. It's well built up. If we do a nice targeted attack on Silesia, the Pope will tell us to stop. Then we can do what we like with Italy. So I think I think that might be a good move. Let's go. Um, we're not going to need that many troops up here to, uh, to deal with the Poles. We could even, if we're feeling a little cheeky, we could hit Pomer Pomerania pretty early. And... Uh, and it, force them out of it, right, and just take this. That might be a move if the king is still sitting there so unprotected. Uh, but let's go ahead with another unit of these guys and yet another unit of Swabians. I want to get up to four, then we'll switch over to something different. Okay, we've now got a free title. All right, we got an alliance with the English. Very nice. And the Danes are coming to me. Beautiful. I will absolutely accept this. Okay, Prince Herman and Princess Brigitte of Denmark. All right, things are not looking so desperate anymore. We are now allied uh, with the Danes. We lost our Italian alliance, though. But yeah, we got a princess out of it, so I think that's okay. We still got a couple of guys down here. What I'm thinking of is abandoning Toulouse, honestly, at least temporarily. If we can get um, get the Pope sort of off of our back with regards to the Italians, if we can, again, take a swipe at Poland that distracts the Pontiff, so he warns us off of them and then gives us free reign to hit Italy, I may take all of these guys out of Toulouse and just go to Provence, get that back, and then hit Milan and Genoa and then through to Tuscany, right? Um, and just hit them as hard as I can because I don't want to be screwing around. Okay, so we've got a... Uh, this is the title here, Imperial Chamberlain. All right, that'll get him up to three, which seems ridiculous. 
And that's just about all I can do. The other thing, though, is go for some builder traits. Uh, my emperor does not have any yet. So if I start working on those like low cost things, um, which I don't have a lot of money now, unfortunately, 771 Florence. But check this out. 1520 is projected profits this season. 1520. That jumped up like by a thousand, basically, by getting a boat here. I'm pretty sure that's that's what that was. Um, I don't believe, yeah, we're not at war with the rebels currently, which is the, again, very nice feature of this game. You can be at peace with rebels if you haven't had contact with them. So that's looking very good. Our prince here has super loyalty. It would be so nice to have him up in Germany right now. But fortunately, uh, we just can't. But my emperor has now two influence. I'm thinking this is a result of the crusade failure catching up to him, uh, as well as losing a couple of places. We lost Flanders, we lost Provence. So obviously that's uh, not good. Right, I do have a princess moving up to Tyrolia. Right, she's moving up to Swabia, rather. All right, is this kind of stuff. This is terrible. I got to watch out for training stuff now because my king's influence is so low. And notice when you stack these guys, they don't always take who you'd expect. So take out the last guy, separate him, uh, separate him from all the rest, drop him on, and assuming they're the same kind of unit, um, he should take over. There's some kind of calculations going on behind the scenes here. So, for example, if one of these was a peasant, he would never take over the stack, right? He would never be considered the commander of the stack. Um, so there's just some things like that. If there's a royal knight or uh, just about any kind of cab, I think he would take precedence over these guys. All right, let's see. Let's go down here. Uh, and yeah, it's probably time to check everything again. I know this is kind of tedious. But I, I really want to make sure I can get everything I can. Okay, I don't know where I started. That's the other problem. But I think that's it. I think that's good. So we're making 1836 now. Just by doing that, it increased my, uh, my yearly profit by... Uh, well, by another 300 or so. So this uh, emissary is at four stars. We are now allied with both the Danes and the English. We're still at war with the Italians. There's a possibility that we could theoretically uh, stop being at war with them. We could get a ceasefire, maybe. Uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure it would be worth it. Um, let's, let's see if we can get the Pope. No, nope, he's allied with the Italians. So if we get a ceasefire with the Italians, right, maybe then we could get uh, get peace with the Pope. Let's give that a shot. Let's send him over here, try to get a ceasefire. thing I need to do... Oh, come on, man. I guess I'm playing a little too close to the uh, uh, to the border in terms of rebellion. Alright. Secret blackmailer. That is not good. If this is revealed, then that's like minus two loyalty or something, or maybe worse. So, that that could be really bad. Alright. We've got a unit of, uh, of malicious sergeants here. I don't know if I have any spare archers. I've got all these Swabians, but this is this is a unit that is good against archer uh, against armor, so I don't really want to use that. Uh, unfortunately, I can't train archers that'll arrive next turn. No mercenaries to be had next door. I can train them here in Austria. Let's do that. Let's get an archer unit. And again, those profits. If we can keep that Eastern Mediterranean trade going, man, oh man, things could start. Start looking, looking up, indeed. So let's go 
Let's take these two archer units out. It's a little risky. We'll just shoot up the um, the malicious sergeants. And oof, they're having trouble too. At least this prince. A lot of their generals look decent, actually. But I want to keep an eye on the Danes and Spain. Let's see. Can I, should I spare another bishop for that purpose? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't have a church here, though. Hmm. These guys are doing just absolutely nothing with Edessa, so I feel like it's good to have a bishop here to keep things tricky. And look at this. They're moving in, guys, for Syria. They were at war with me briefly uh, when I was fighting Novgorod, so we could be back at war with the Byzantines. Where on earth is that king? A lot of princes over here. Let's go to Moldavia. Actually, you know what? They might... The Hungarians might be in Volhynia now. Or the people of Novgorod, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is all... <laughs> very touchy. Um, let's hold off on training these guys. Because I don't have a... Well, I've got a decent general there. Let's go with... Um, let's go with some Slav Javelin men, sure. And here, instead of Swabians... They cost just the same, but feudal men-at-arms... I wonder if it's worth it to recruit them, honestly. They're cheaper to train by, like, half. But the good attack and armored is totally beaten by very good attack and armored, plus all the rest of this stuff. So honestly, I don't, I don't think I want to bother with feudal men-at-arms. Let's see. Um, we may want to check out this guy, because he's, yes, he's a little upset. We'll give him Count of Champagne. Get him back up to a decent five shields. I guess we could give the Lorraine title to this guy. Gosh, three shields. We just we need to be building little things. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we need to get our builder trait going. Uh, yeah, Town Watch would be helpful down here. In Swabia, I have actually not built watchtowers. Now's a good time to do that. There is kind of some advantage to not rushing and building all of the the, the, the things you could possibly build. Um, let's go with keep and curtain wall. Sure, two hundred for that. Burgundy, Burgundy. This will help with loyalty. Um, I'm avoiding border forts still. Again, this may be a, kind of a foolish thing. Let's go with a boyer in Tyrolia because I always feel like I need archers. And Austria. I don't want to go with that. This will make 306. I'm currently making 363. You know, income is income. All right, I got to check this again. I think what happens is, uh, you know, after a turn, like right now, stuff is changing. So if I was right on the borderline of Rebellion, like right around 102, whatever, yeah, the Poles are moving back into Bohemia, so something's going on there. Uh, but when the AI makes its moves, that's the chance that the Rebellion might happen. Something might occur to, like a spy moves in, or who knows what. So that could be what's going on. All right, this should be an easy little battle, though. So, let's see. We've got, uh, yeah, just archers. We're just going to group everybody up, march them straight on. Uh, actually, no, we're going to be a little careful. Oh, that's right, they're attacking me. What am I thinking? Yeah. Fall back. back. There we go. Oh, 
come on, don't be routing. They're skirmishing away and they're routing. Damn it. Forget that, uh, uh the, uh, morale debuff for skirmishing away. If you're not doing anything else, your archers, you can't just do this forever without penalty in this game. And we're not getting any kills from over here. There we go, we got one. The enemy general is dead. Okay, A good. Alright, they're not attacking anymore. Beautiful, thank god. Alright, they don't have anywhere to retreat to. Let's just get them off the field. We really uh, don't want to lose any of these battles. I mean, I, you know, it's yeah, it's one unit of militia sergeants, but I gotta really be careful with this because if I lose another settlement, oh, and here we go. Speaking of, if I lose another settlement, the danger, of course, is uh, that that hurts my influence even more, and my generals and provinces become even more rebellious. So we're starting to see, well, we're continuing to see strains. Let's see, we outnumber them here. Uh, a lot of our units are these Slav warriors who I have placed entirely too much trust in. Uh, totally unupgraded as usual, while the AI has been happily building its armorers. Uh, so all of its men are wearing the very finest in mail or whatever it is they're wearing now. They've got a prince unit, Royal Knights. He's only got one command star, but that doesn't matter too much because a lot of his guys have valor anyway. The exception here is these two units, I guess this unit as well. Um, we've only got a single unit of archers, and if I hadn't moved out the two archers, right, to defend Bavaria from that rebellion, that stupid little rebellion, uh, I would have had three archers in this battle, or at least two. Um, okay, they've also got a unit of mounted crossbowmen, but I do have Swabian swords. We know that Swabian swords can go up against Italian infantry and do really well. So, if they don't rush me crazily, then we might be okay here. And we're getting an actual winter landscape here. Okay, we get to deploy. We've got a very, very dramatic hill. That's right, they're coming up into Austria, so we can deploy in the woods if we want. There's not much of it, though. I don't know if this really counts. Um, let's see. Are we going to get a concealment? We are. Okay. You know, since they got Cav, sure, I'm going to corner camp at the top of this hill. Uh, let's see. Maybe our spearmen, we want to be out of the woods just so they can get their rank bonus. Uh, but the Slavs are definitely going to take shelter in the trees here. Uh, let's drag them out a little more nicely here. Not, not working out too well. Let's let's change this up a bit. Okay, I think that's fine. Uh, we've got our lone archer. You know, I'm kind of tempted to put him, like, down here. Or at least here, where he can get a nice angle on the troops coming up the hill. Something like that. I mean, he's shooting downhill. That can be kind of a problem. But we just need him to get some hits. Okay, Swabian Swordsman. Uh, I'm going to have them back. And we're going to kind of wait for the right time. And we've got Urban Militia. Okay, very nice. Maybe I should have the Urban Militia up front. Kind of small units. Alright, I guess that's everybody. Let's see how they're going to do this. Yeah, there's their Italian infantry. Alright, they are going to send out some scouts. Try to find me in the trees. Uh, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just going to wait out the timer on this. Nope. Too much to hope for. Okay. Let's start firing, guys. Be nice if I could kill these uh, mounted crosswomen before they find my other units. That's a nice little volley. Very nice. And I will 
still bring my spearmen down because if this unit wants to charge my archers, I might just let them have the engagement and then follow up with my uh, spears. Don't want them to get close to the trees. I don't want them to find my units. I want them to keep sending, you know, uh, probes out. Push them, they won't get too many shots off. Don't want to push them too far though, because it's nice to have them within range of my bows. And yeah, see, every time they move, my arrows go in a different spot. Okay. Kind of go back up the hill here. It's going to take just about all of our arrows to just deal with this one unit, but I think that's a good use of their time. This is a, a tricky unit to deal with because there's enough of them when they start out, they're 40 men strong, that they can be pretty, uh, pretty impactful even in melee. And, you know, obviously they are a, uh, they're an anti-armor unit at range. Right, this is very nice. Oh, that rain is hurting stuff. And we've basically gone through a third of the time. And that's it for the arrows. Let's run back up to the trees here. No, run back up to the trees. And I've got no cav of my own and no ranged with which to address this annoyance. So we're just going to have to let them shoot at us. Um, I'm going to have my spearmen. Let's go to loose formation. And let's, you know what, let's go right here. They could be close enough to shoot at my uh, spearmen. My archers will also go to loose. You know, if they want to get closer, they're going to have to move through my spears. They may want to. They may want to go ahead because I'm in loose. Okay, good. You run away, very nice. We'll see if that's just a feint. And they may get back anyway, because that was a result of um, you know, just seeing that there's a lot of guys nearby. They may, they may change their mind, but now it's so rainy, I don't know where the enemy is. <laughs> They're trying to work up that hill. So I guess we better move back kind of where we are. We can expect them to be up here. So that is the problem with the woods. It's slightly downhill. They could outflank us and get up to the top. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. I can just barely see them over here. And they've got a bunch of archers. That's the problem. So they can stand off, shoot us in the trees. And they're not going to give us a tree engagement anyway. We've used up half the clock. We've done well to do that. But, yeah, I think we're going to have to change things up. Nope, I want the urban militia to be kind of in the back. Slob warriors to be in the front. Spearmen right about there. Swabians right about there. General up here, and the archers kind of near the general to flank if we get the opportunity. They still, I'm not sure that they know exactly where I am. They're just moving around the map. They are going to find me before the timer expires, and so we are going to have to fight this. You know, I was hoping to avoid uh, having to do that. Now, we've got them all right here. So 
So we're going to run out there. Run out here. Let's get the Swabians right at those Italian infantry. Get the general right down. Um, I want to attack the Royal Bodyguard unit. And look at those slobs just immediately break. Look at the Royal Knights. Look at that garbage. Jeez. Pathetic. Alright, I got the uh, archers. May as well bring them up. All right, we're done recruiting Slavs, no offense. I will recruit them for garrison duty. I mean, I know in some circumstances they can have a use. But we're gonna lose this. If nothing else, they're going to lose some Italian infantry. They still got 16 on there. They still got a lot. All right, let's just speed it up. No sense. Yep. Couldn't click that execute button fast enough. All right. Austria lost. Execute. Uh, no. No, we're not going to pay back. I just got a command star, probably for that little rebellion I beat. You got another son, but that doesn't matter. He's going to be coming of age down in Tripoli. Okay, this guy's a builder, which is fine. My term is crack-brained. Not good. We get a lot of bad traits. All right, we need to go for, like, three more turns. Three more turns. Um, but we need to keep training, absolutely. So... Just keep doing this. Keep doing the uh, training the unit that has been working somewhat. I mean, the kind of nice thing about having land over here where the king is, is that we could literally lose all of Germany and we, our faction would not be wiped out. I mean, we would have lots of problems. I'm hoping to avoid that, but uh, we could theoretically lose all of Germany. But yeah, check that out. Losing a settlement. Uh, losing a province is causing lots of problems here for us. Okay, they're going to have to assault. Well, possibly not, I guess. They could just wait it out. Just a, a one season anyway. I've got some guys in Franconia, but now they're in Austria. So now... Hmm. Now the problem is... Let's see, if I take him out, I'm going to need to get these guys somewhere useful. So it feels like I should stop training Swabian Swordsman. Because if I train another one, he's probably not going to be super loyal. So, let's bring them over to Bavaria. And let's bring these guys down to Bavaria as well. They'll all stack up together under Lord von Vogelwiede, who is actually pretty decent. He doesn't have too many stupid traits. We'll move this uh, stack down to Franconia. And uh, Swabia is looking a little hurt. Let's get a token unit of... Uh, let's see. This is just a garrison unit. So we're just going to get spears. They're just for garrison purposes, nothing else. And yeah, we're just going to hold out here. Let's see, how's our ship doing? We've got another ship. All right, so the most lucrative place for that is probably just one of these islands, honestly. Um, the next, probably the best move, once you've got these two regions, Eastern Med and the Nile Coast, is to get up to the Black Sea, especially at this point. This is one sea region which currently has one, two, three, four, five ports. Uh, I'm not at war with any of these people. So what I should probably do is actually move up this way and uh, keep training ships I guess right, the king is out here we could get this back 
can get that back. Two more seasons. But he's probably contemplating heading up to Burgundy. Okay. This would also be a good time to swipe at the Poles. Oh, there go the Danes in for the kill, and we are attacked in Toulouse. The Italians, of course, have sea supremacy, um, and so they're bringing in a ton of reinforcements. This does open them up. This is going to be a big clash. All right, that looks totally fine to me. What they're bringing in is a bunch of weird stuff. They've got their Gulam bodyguards, the bribery uh, from down in Grenada, I think. They've got a bunch of archers following up as reinforcements, but they've got these two units, which are going to be totally useless as they are attacking. They've got a ton of archers, but so do I. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to my eight. So it's even in terms of that. Their infantry can force its way through mine. Um, so that is a problem, and we've got exactly the same command. The big difference here is that they've got, uh, they've got more upgrades. So here we go. I'd love to break him here. Capture the doge. Now, this is a bridge battle, but it's two bridges. So where are they going to set up? I'm going to gamble on this side. Um, and that's because I don't think the AI typically is going to play the two bridges game. All right, we've got four archers. Let's just do four and four. Right, we've got some more aggressive attack units. We do have feudal men-at-arms, that's nice. So we've got a decent front line, a, a sort of a crappy middle line. Let's see, where are they going? Okay, okay, they're way up there at the top of the hill. You guys are attacking me, so if it looks like they're going to move down and to the right. And they're not. All right. Okay, let's get all the infantry uh, grouped. These archers grouped, and these archers also grouped. Move them down a little closer. So those two ballista units are just dead. Uh, dead slots, basically. What we're going to really have to do is... Well, okay, we can shoot these guys down pretty easily, I think. But the Italian infantry is going to be a very different beast. So we're going to wait for them to cross. We're going to surround them. And we're going to hope our men don't rout immediately. Um, and hope that this guy has some traits that are going to encourage that. gonna let them come up the hill, honestly, because they're not following this up with a bunch of other infantry. They've got mostly archers. So we let them come up the hill, our archers skirmish away. Good, we routed those militia sergeants. Uh, and then we get a nice attack as they're marching up the hill. Nice downhill charge. You guys need to skirmish away. Probably shouldn't... Oh, that was quick. Alright, halt, halt, halt. Beautiful. This needs to go really well. Okay, okay. Uh, halt. Okay. All right, infantry guys. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure you're back up again. This is great. So we've routed them once. That means they're gonna be more likely to route again, even if they do come back, which they probably will, as we can see. 
Actually, no. Are they running running away on our side? Which, hey, I'll take it. Uh, we're going to get some feudal sergeants. Hopefully they'll, uh, they'll route next. Yep, there they go. Oh, this is beautiful. We really needed a big win, so hopefully this is gonna <laughs> this is gonna continue. Those royal knights are gonna try to get across too, but this guy has seven valor. I'm just noticing. And what about you? He's got a good amount as well. So we're gonna want to do this carefully. Now let's get these guys over on the side more. Now, much as I would love to send my uh, my general down here to chase these guys off the field completely, I don't think that's a good move because we would be in range of all their archers. So we want all the fighting to happen like right up here. Okay, here comes the king, or the general. He's going to be faster, so we need to start moving these guys sooner. Oh, wow. So he must have some bad traits. I mean, this is a pretty crappy bridge to try to assault over. So hard to blame him. Oh, this is going to be great. We're just getting tons of kills. We're getting some valor on our archers. Once that infantry is, um, is nice and gone for real, you know, I may contemplate following up Especially as we start to run out of arrows. Some of these archer units, like this guy, let's go ahead and withdraw him. We've got, I think, urban militia coming. But yeah, see, they're definitely reforming, and the infantry, anyway, is trying to push again. Looks like the king's just leaving. <laughs> Alright, we're going to withdraw you, and withdraw you, and withdraw you. We've got uh, a lot of archers with arrows left. Right, you should be behind the archers, though. Yeah, see, this is why I can't just follow this up and make it super decisive. Um, they do have some more reinforcements. Again, they got some Gulam bodyguards. They've got some uh, some camel archers, uh, but mostly they've got a lot of other uh, Genoese archers, I believe. And our arrows are you know, are kind of running out, so. It may come down to a melee crush at the bridge when their reinforcements come on, if they do bring on reinforcements, because they may not. This is just an embarrassing performance on their part. Okay, yep, the draw. I'm trying to think, how many more units do I have? Oh, okay, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I can recruit another unit of archers. Okay, they're actually going to fight this time. No, they're not. Okay, perfect. Try one more time. There's the Gulams. All right, so they may decide to uh, they may decide to come and fight. All right, I don't know why you're not marching. 
Right, but I gotta call these guys on. I gotta imagine they're gonna route pretty soon too. This is a two Valor Archer unit. Yep, okay. I kinda figured they might just route anyway. Alright, I think it's a good point now to go after these Genoese sailors. We'll wait. We'll wait. They're bringing down reinforcements. So are we. We've got three urbans coming. Alright, we're going to make short work of them. really trying to push the archers away at this point. So let's bring down the general. Because it's going to be a while before anything else comes. So I think we can uh, get a good push going on them. Alright, there they go. That's it. They've decided not to fight anymore. Awesome. So we didn't get the king. Uh, we didn't get that many prisoners. I'll not execute those guys. We'll hold off. Maybe there's a some kind of general or something. We got 145 out of that. Okay, fair enough. But that was that was great. We really, really needed that. Alright, the Poles want alliance. I'm sure they would love an alliance right now, but unfortunately I'm planning to attack you guys. But look how they're doing. So this is interesting. They do have a lot of troops. Maybe I should rethink this. My big plan here is hinging on being able to attack the Poles quickly and get a quick ceasefire. Right? To distract the Pope. So that I can focus on Italy. I still think that's a good plan. I mean, they do have lots of men, but there's also lots of big armies of the Hungarians and of the people of Novgorod, so I'm going to not accept. It's, it looks very dangerous. The Poles have just tons of... Well, they, get, they got a couple of big stacks. And certainly it's dangerous to me, uh, but I'm hoping that they're more afraid of the other factions, that they won't mind if I just take Silesia off of them and then beg for peace. All right, good. We got Builder. That's going to help a lot with public order. Hopefully no more little rebellions. Okay. So, let's take a look at loyalties here. Fairly decent. I really wish we could get that up again, but let's um Let's see. We've got the we've got the money to make some improvements. Let's go for that. That's pretty cheap. We want stuff that's quick and easy to build. And of course, also that's useful. There we go, Mott and Bailey. These little things, these little useless upgrades that I never build, this is what they're good for, forcing those, uh, forcing those builder traits to appear. Okay. Uh, that you know, feels like seven or 800 uh, florins spent on that. And I think it was 1180, 1181 when we get the warning from the Pope. So two more seasons. I'm gonna hold out for two more seasons. Now one thing I could theoretically do is build a bark here just to screw up the Italians from being able to land forces here. Yeah, okay, he did not have, I don't think he had this trait before when he first attacked, but uh, maybe he did. At any rate, uh, this is a nice place to defend. 
So hopefully they don't get wise and start attacking Burgundy because that, you know, that would be uh, much worse. Okay, now again, we gotta hold off. We can't attack the, uh, the Italians unless we wanna get excommunicated. So wait for the excommunication to end. Attack the Poles, wait for another warning. That's how this is gonna work. Okay, good, I guess. The Italians invade Friesland. What a bunch of jerks. I feel like this is the army that they just sent at, uh, at Toulouse. Yeah, retreat. They're gonna probably have to assault that one, which will at least be interesting. Okay, there's France. France is gone. The Danes have Aquitaine. Okay, Austria's fallen. A lot of building. Let's see if we get a nice trait. Not yet. Not quite yet, but we can still do a little more here. Let's do, just do that little extra bit of teching up. Oh, we'll go for spears and champagne. Yeah, 1140. I think really that they are going to overextend themselves. I do wish that I had a, a, a spy building so I could start messing with their public order. But I think up here they're going to be uh, they're going to run into trouble trying to hold this from their territory, especially once I start counterattacking. Not this season, but the next one. Um, okay. So I think we want to wait next season, then attack Poland. Am I ready to attack Poland? Is the question. Um, geez, I'm not sure that I am. Oh, this guy has only one loyalty. Well, this is all terrible. Let's check the king's influence. Okay, much better, much better. So probably newly recruited guys are not going to suck. Possibly. Let's get some archers. Uh, urban militia, urban militia, just kind of anything. This is potentially maybe a lot of units that are going to be very rebellious, but I don't think so. All right, I'm going to hold off on the, uh, the mounted crossbows. Okay, we may have another boat. Nope, that's next season. Okay, but we do have the uh, the king of the Hungarians with quite low uh, influence himself here. Let's go ahead and try for an alliance there and see what the Poles have. You know, they could theoretically, if I take Silesia, they could move all these guys back over and, uh, you know, attempt to take it back by throwing all of their weight at me. I don't think they have a lot of weight to throw around, and I think Novgorod is looking quite strong. So I think I think they would, uh, they would probably be okay with a ceasefire. We've got a good emissary here. Let's just check. Uh, now let's move to Poland. We want to keep them close to the Polish king. And I will see if I have a bishop hanging around anywhere else. Okay, I'll try. He's here. Let's bring him over to Kiev, and then we'll kind of keep him in that region. This is just a problem. If I had spies, I could start encouraging uh, rebellion and get the French to reemerge again. But I guess I need to watch out for that myself, actually. Okay. And it, it's maybe a good indication of Polish strength. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Spanish and the Danes are going at it in Aquitaine. I'm just going to stay out of that one. Oh, wow. Didn't think I'd see that. Okay, see, this has taken them a while. Okay, Hungarians do not want to ally with me. Hmm. Great builder, here we go, plus one loyalty. Thank you so much. 
Let's now take a look at this guy who was at three, and now he's still at three. What the heck? Oh, Envy. Well, that's a problem. Ah, uh, he's such a good general, though. Okay. So, here's what I have to consider. I don't think I want a war with Hungary. I don't really want a war with the Poles, but I do need a war with another faction. Uh, another Catholic faction that I can then get the Pope distracted about. I don't want to just attack the Italians now because he's just going to warn me away from them again. So, what we need to do is... Let's see, we do not have the... Uh, the Polish king in Pomerania anymore, but he is in Poland itself. Ooh. Meaning I could theoretically move troops from Bohemia right over there. Is it worth it? Hmm. What he has now is two royal knights. This army is not strong enough to deal with that. Especially if he trains like one other thing. Or if he moves anybody around. So I don't think I want to risk it. Uh, plus that potentially, it just broadens my border with Hungary, which I don't want. So we're just going to go right into Silesia. And we're going to move... Jeez, oh, I kind of don't want to move this guy now because we border... Border with them. But let's see, maybe we could assassinate him. 50%. That's a 34, let's throw him at it. And uh, that's it for our assassins in the area anyway. Okay, so we'll keep this feudal sergeant up here. And yeah, he's going to take precedence over the spearman, even though... I guess that's fine. Three three uh, shields of loyalty, I guess, is okay. Okay, let's go with uh, urban militia in Brandenburg and with the promise of eventually being able to train other stuff there. And we're going to hit Silesia. This feels, <laughs> feels bad. Uh, but let's see. I guess we're going to leave him behind to uh, rule in Franconia. And we're just going to send these units... Yep. And I'm going to take... Oh, I'd love to take the Vikings out of here, but I can't really take either unit. I guess archers aren't going to really help anyway in this kind of battle. Um, what would help is these guys. Alright, just enough there. Let's go for another spear unit, and uh, yeah, let's go with more Swabian swords in Swabia. We're getting archers trained up everywhere. And these guys, we're just going to have to wait. I think I want to give this guy a title as well. We do have Lorraine. There we go. Loyalty is now kind of decent, and our ship should be done here at the Nile coast. Okay, we got a nice couple of command stars. Um, let's move that one over to the Sea of Crete. Every one of these is going to give us something, uh, like some port that we can export to. So, you know, our, our, our economy is not doing fantastic because we're just losing territories. So we're going to need to get these back. Um, but that is the plan. That is the plan. Okay, let's just keep training. Keep training archers, I think. Feels like the safest option. We're going to have this army hit Austria. We're going to have this army hit... Uh, well, we could go for Venice. Well, we'll just see. Let's see what the Pope says, too. Because I'm really hoping to see that warning. We get warned away from attacking the Poles, and we're good to go. Oh, whoa, Egypt. Egypt attacks... Okay, this is very good news, but Egypt attacks the Byzantines. Beautiful. 
Excellent. And we've killed the general here. Our assassin has jumped up to, uh, to rank three, apparently. Awesome job. Polish retreat. Silesia conquered. It's under siege. The Egyptians are going to withdraw out of Syria. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. We've got time. We've got time. All right. Perfect. So this means, I think, that we can assault this. And it should be okay. I don't think we're going to be excommunicated because that's within two years. Now, we want to take back places like Friesland if possible. I don't know if it is. Who do they have up here now? <laughs> a couple of Berber camels. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's give that a shot. Seventy-six percent, and we'll follow it up with the thirty-four. All right, this guy's at four now. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we got 60 loyal archers down here. Okay. So, now the big counter-offensive against the Italians. Where are we going to send these guys? Um, I'd love to have some mercenaries available in Bohemia right now. We do have some in Burgundy, though. We can give them some taste of their own medicine in the form of these Italian infantry. Get some Spanish javelin, Faris, Georgina Cav. You know what would be nice? I think a couple Mangonel crew would do fairly nice, but that's going to cost a lot of money, 262, and we've only got 1,200. <sighs> because I want Milan and I want to get it, I want to keep it. Look at this place. This is so built up. They could probably make feudal knights here. Okay. I'm going to throw in against Provence. We may... Do I want to abandon Toulouse? On the other hand, this is potentially an opportunity to hit Aragon. Allied with the Danes, allied with the English. Hmm. Oh, but I'm just noticing the influence of Emperor, Lud Emperor Ludwig V is zero. He's got absolutely... Zero influence. I don't know. I do not know if I've ever seen that on one of my kings. Uh, so that sucks. Uh, that is so bad. Well, this is this is what we're trying to uh, write. So this is an army that is basically just archers. This army is not strong enough to take it. But we may be strong enough to take Friesland. This is only going to last. This is going to last for two years, so we've got some time. We're training up some stuff. Let's go. Uh, let's go with some archers in Franconia. We got some spears. Let's go with some more urban militia in Lorraine. And that guy's looking decently loyal, I guess. So let's take, uh, who do I want to leave behind in Champagne? I mean, maybe those 80 spearmen, but they're not too loyal. Although neither is anybody, to be honest. Um, I guess these guys will do this. And I think this is good to go here. They're being led by this five-star general who is doing fantastic, plus three morale, charismatic leader. So that's really good. We've got nine royal bodyguards here and really just one full archer unit versus my two, three and a half. I don't have a lot of line units, but neither does he really and I can send in some even more archers. I mean, that, that may not be the answer for everything. Let's actually go with, uh, with the urban militia. I think that'd be more useful. And if they'll take it, yeah, let's go with, with more archers. Okay, so that's what's happening up there. We're going to hold on to freeze land because they're probably not going to assault. And we can wait. We've got a little bit of time. In Swabia, let's bring uh, let's bring this guy down uh, down here. We want to sort of 
group him up with everybody else. Hmm. Yeah, Tyrolia, I guess. And now we're going to go and make a decision about which one of these to target. I think we got to target Milan. Uh, if the king were present, that would make the decision a little bit easier, but he is not. So I think what we'll do is leave behind, sure, 100 spearmen. And we're going to throw everything. Yeah, let's, let's just see what this looks like. All right, they're coming down the hill. Okay. You'll join up, and you'll join up, and we've got kind of a lot of garbage, but also a couple of good units. A lot of archers. All right, and in here, we're training urbans. They got a ton of urban militia. A lot of those militia type units, and I've got four Swabians, a couple archers. I've got five Swabians, actually. Let's leave behind these um, really unimpressive Slavs. And yep, we're just kind of training whatever. Over here in Toulouse, it feels really risky to bring all of them out, but I think we're just going to test our uh, the, the willingness of the Spanish to not swat me when they see the first opportunity. And I don't have any really loyal units. I guess these guys could wait. We really want to get Italy. So that's the ultimate goal. And that means we're leaving Venice for the moment. I think this will be fine. I, th I think this will be fine. We're moving up there into Flanders. We're moving uh, onto Assault Silesia. We're attacking Austria. We're attacking Milan. We're attacking Provence. We will have a river battle here, but we're hopefully going to just so outnumber them that that's not going to matter. And it's it should be two bridges. So that is going to help. I guess we can also bring down some guys from Burgundy. Let's um, Let's do that. Jeez, I guess we can't really just leave anybody. Um, we can leave him and a, and a unit of spears, I guess. How about that? These guys can come down to join Milan just in case they get reinforcements. And you know what? Let's hire... Wait a minute. That Mangonel crew is more expensive because it's got armor upgrades. Okay, we just need the one. And we'll bring it along with us into Burgundy. I mean, that's not good in terms of loyalty. Uh, but hopefully that'll be fine. And uh, we are building yet another ship, and we're going to get that one over to the Mertune Sea. And then we're going to sit and see about how um, how our trade and our income is doing and how the, the result of all these battles is going. Uh, because there could be some big repercussions here. The Poles could turn around and... Uh, Focus our attention on us. Get a quick ceasefire with Novgorod. Let's check out that. No, they're they're going to be busy with these two factions. There's not been hardly any movement around Kiev. Hungarians still hold that in strength. So hopefully the Poles are going to feel compelled to defend Bohemia. They've made no attempt to take back Prussia. They've not really moved on Lithuania, but they may again. Uh, but regardless, uh, I think they're mostly concerned about the east. And if I come at them with a ceasefire after this assault attempt, that could be good. Well, I think we're going to leave it there for the episode, folks. We've got a lot of battles to get to in the next one, and this one is getting a little long. But uh, I am very much looking forward to this to see if we can right the ship of state here. We've got a desperate battle for our survival, it feels like, uh, but also an opportunity to get some more glorious achievement goals and to get some stability and finally get some influence for our quite young and untested emperor all the way down to Tripoli. So thank you very much for joining me in this episode. I hope you'll stick around for the next one. Until then, everybody, take care.